Hello, welcome to the Monday, June 18th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Lorna got a real nice puzzle on Friday. If you're interested in cryptography, that may be something for you to look at. But apparently what we're looking at here is some kind of command control channel or XFIL mechanism. The data is being sent to a domain do not spam today.com and contains as subject three sort of random letter combinations, then the letters MID colon, and then what looks like sort of an MD5 hash. The body is then again what looks like eight words, but really just uh, random characters. So, not really sure what this is all about. But if you did see similar emails leave your network, and in particular, if you were able to capture any of the malware responsible to it, then please let us know. Or if you're just interested in a little crypto puzzle, well, uh, maybe you can take a stab at it and figure out what algorithm, what keys are being used in this case. And Didier came across an interesting trick with Office documents. Turns out that if Office documents are encrypted using the password Velvet Sweatshop, they will be displayed automatically without the user having to enter the password. The reason for this is that apparently old versions of Excel had this as a default password, and for backward compatibility, well, a new version of Excel will just automatically open documents encrypted using this particular password. Of course, this may still throw off some anti-malware solutions that will not open the document because it is encrypted and because they do not know about this fairly uncommon default password. Well, if you wondered about the spike in port 8000 scans this last couple of days, well, there are a couple of reasons for this. First of all, there's apparently a new buffer overflow vulnerability that is being exploited against the Xiaomi UC HTTPD web server. This is one of those lightweight web servers that you often have in embedded devices. And secondly, the Satori botnet also incorporated a new deal link exploit that also typically is exploited against port 8000. Now, the Satori botnet has since moved on a little bit and has now also added a second D-Link exploit, but this particular exploit is typically launched against port 80 and 8080. So 8000 gets a little bit less attention these last days over the weekend. And Chihu 360 also came across an interesting new piece of malware that does yet again use the clipboard in order to steal your crypto coin secrets. We've seen this happen a few times before. The trick is always that the malware sits in the background, doesn't do much, just watches your clipboard. If your clipboard happens to contain something that looks like a Bitcoin or Ethereum address, then it will change this address to the malicious one. So the idea here is that your Bitcoins or Ethereum coins will then be transferred to the attacker's account instead of the account that you intended to transfer the money to. This has been done again quite a few times in the past, but what seems to be a little bit different here is that this particular botnet is quite active with 300,000 infected systems within the last week, according to Chihu 360. And a couple weeks ago, I believe I mentioned a new authentication standard, Web USB. Web USB is really sort of an extension of U2F. The great thing about these authentication standards is that they no longer require a username and a password. Instead, you have a little hardware authenticator that takes care of the authentication for you. And you typically just have to press a button on this authenticator. Now with U2F, the great thing kind of about this was that the authenticator will then only communicate with the actual website that you're currently looking at. 
yet. So this way you can't really be tricked by lookalike websites and the like because, well, uh, the authenticator itself verifies what website is currently loaded in the browser. Now with WebUSB, they loosen this up a little bit. Now a website can actually connect directly to the USB device and it no longer has to be the website that's actually loaded in the browser, which uh, then led to some interesting vulnerabilities for essentially someone can then set up proxies and the like in order to trick a user to submit credentials to the wrong site. Now, Google in Chrome did for now disable the web USB API and then plans to roll out a fix for it. it will actually then just disable very specific devices that are vulnerable to this particular attack. Sadly, the disclosure was somewhat messed up in this particular case. A report was originally sent to Ubico, which of course is very active in this standard, who then actually got credit for disclosing the bug from Google instead of the original developer who found the problem. Ubico, on the other hand, states that they found the problem in parallel to this particular researcher. But needless to say, I hope the bug gets fixed and that we do get this standard because I really like uh, these standards and would recommend that you look into UTF, which is the currently supported standard, at least in Google Chrome. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.